said Joe Biden's victory has now been certified in states totaling 279 electoral votes. So do you now accept that he's president-elect? Well, we've got a process that I think we've been going through since the election, and uh, it's going to play itself out. Uh, I think that we've got a threshold coming on December 14th that uh, when the Electoral College meets. Um, I think, George, what is at play is when you look at what was talked about earlier with the Secretary of State in Georgia, I think when you reflexively dismiss that maybe nothing has happened at all uh, versus the other side of the spectrum, systemic fraud, widespread, it's a wide gulf. And I think that for places like Indiana, uh, where I built my business here in my hometown here today, when I was trying to help weigh in on these Georgia races from right after the election, nobody wanted to talk about even the Georgia races that are so pivotal. They wanted to come back, were uncertain about what happened in the election. So whether uh, we dismiss it reflexively, uh, whether we would find widespread fraud, there's a wide gulf in between. And I think that when you just say that there's nothing there, you're going to have half of the country uh, uncertain about what just happened and disgruntled going into the future. Sir, I think it's pretty hard to argue that it's been reflexively dismissed. What you've had since the election is certification processes in every state. So those include audits and in many states recounts. Those certifications have been done in many states led by Republican governors like Arizona and Georgia. There have been more than uh, 55 lawsuits brought forward by the president and his allies, 38 have been dismissed by judges. There have been investigations directed by the Justice Department, by the Attorney General. The Attorney General came back and said there's no evidence of widespread fraud. So the process has played out, hasn't it? And there's no evidence of widespread fraud. Why can't you accept the results? I think it's easy to say it's played out because that might be the uh, most convenient thing to say. But let's look at what the uh, Secretary of State did not mention in Georgia. You know, the video where after a uh, counting place closed, uh, you see boxes of ballots coming out from underneath the table. I know that's kind of a graphic example, but... Uh, well, I have to stop you right you there. Got... No, that uh, it wasn't mentioned because it didn't show anything improper. He's spoken to that this week. They said that was exactly the proper process for counting the ballots. There wasn't anything wrong shown in that video at all. So you're just throwing out a claim out it... there that, that, that doesn't prove what you're saying. I think unless you scrutinize something like that further, or what about like it was Wisconsin, scrutinized where there were where there were a couple hundred thousand absentee ballots that got cast without a request for it. All I can tell you is if you don't at least give perfunctory kind of uh, investigation into it, uh, whether it's December fourteenth and what happens beyond. You're going to have a good part of the country. It's over 50 percent that view that something is amiss, and that's going to carry forward in terms of undermining a democracy. Um, I just don't think that if you say, if you don't pursue it, overturn every stone, this is going to linger into the future, and it's going to be the, to the disadvantage of whoever is there trying to run the country. Well, I guess the question is, is, it, is the, the harm to democracy being done by those who propagate false claims? In Wisconsin, judges have dismissed those claims as well after investigating it. Here's what your colleague, Senator Mitt Romney, had to say about this this week. For the president or anyone else to go out and allege widespread fraud and say the election is rigged and the election was stolen, that obviously strikes at the very foundation of democracy here and around the world for that matter. People watch America. If we can't have a free and fair election, how can they have it in other nations of the world? Isn't the damage being done by those who continue to foster the doubts? So when you hear a statement like that, I think that that makes sense. That's the one extreme. But on the other hand, if you do not take, and it's been surfacing more and more each day, if you do not uh, take it seriously, the legislatures that are involved, look at Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia. When you take the number of electoral votes associated with that roughly 40,000 vote popular margin, that's under half of what it was uh, back in 2016. So all I'm telling you is when you put two and two together, if we don't let the process play itself out, 
uh, regardless of what you're talking about in terms of unifying the country, there are going to be many people that are unsettled with the fact that we don't take it to its full control. Senator, you just mentioned three states, Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin. There were audits in those three states. There were recounts in those three states. Two of those states are led by Republican governors who certified the election results, saying there's no reason to doubt them. Jarge, recounts are one thing, and we all know that they hardly ever change a uh, result of an election. Ballot integrity, a whole other issue. And uh, from the get-go, there was a dialogue on recounts, and uh, people have certified all this stuff. That, to me, is dismissing some of the evidence, sworn testimony that's out there. And if you don't carry it to its conclusion, you're going to have uneasiness going into the future. Uh, that's the point. It has been carried to its conclusion. That is all we have time for this morning. Thanks very much. Let's bring in now the number two Democrat in the Senate, Dick Durbin.